Good afternoon, everyone. It's Simon Anderson. I'm sitting with Graham Linehan, who I'm sure needs no introduction. Um, Graham's here in New Zealand uh, promoting his book tour, uh, but what I'm interested in is more his perspectives. I think that he is extremely well placed to provide uh, uh, an international perspective on events in New Zealand over the last 12 months. Um, good afternoon. Hello, how's it going? Very well, sir. Um, the first question I always ask writers is, um, is what sort of pen do you use? I, my handwriting was destroyed by my, uh, my teachers at school who used to punish us. It was around the time that they stopped using corporal punishment. So uh, we used to get a thing called the leather, where they just hit your hand with this thing that was actually specially made for priests. Uh, to hit children with, you know, you would buy it in shops, child hitting straps. And uh, then that became unfashionable. And um, they uh, used to just make us write, uh, you know, transcribe pages and pages of, of boring books just to punish us. And I used to want to get through it so quickly that, that, I, that, I, that my handwriting just kind of started to flatten and look really bizarre. And, Finally, I just lost my any pleasure I had from writing by hand. So when I got a typewriter, I never I never really wrote anything long form by hand again, you know. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I really, it's just like a, a a spider crawling across a page, you know. All right, I'm, I'm, that's disappointing, and I'm sorry to hear it. Uh, bef before uh, conducting this interview, I announced on X that uh, you and I would be meeting today and invited. Uh, uh, anyone to submit questions and one of the people who did was a chap by the name of uh, Pete Chandler uh, and he asked me to ask you on behalf of himself and me and other fountain pen enthusiasts hmm. how how do we fountain penises become a protected gender identity <laughs> I don't know I don't know I mean uh, unfortunately yeah if I if I was a fountain pen man myself I might have a good answer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Graham, New Zealanders were deeply shocked by the events around Posey Parker, Kelly, uh, J. King Mitchell's uh, uh, visit to New Zealand uh, last year. And there, there were three things that really stood out for us as, as a society, as a culture and as a people. Uh, the first was that, um, that the left-wing activists would in a quiet country like ours, resort to political violence to suppress free speech, uh, and that they would do this to women and the elderly shocked us. The second thing that shocked us was how tacitly approved those events were by the establishment, the political class, the judicial class, the police who, who seemed to be uh, uh, less than... Um, less than uh, uh, what we would expect in terms of pursuing prosecutions and, and holding the, the guilty culpable. But probably I think the, the, the largest thing to occur to us was the dichotomy between domestic media coverage and what people were seeing on social media and what people were seeing in the international media. So my question for you, and I realise it's long-winded, is what was your perception in the moment of watching what was happening in Albert Park? Unfortunately, I, I saw it coming. You know, I, I, I go to Let Women Speak events because I think that men at those events have a little bit of a pacifying effect uh, these people who attack women at these uh, at these events are uh, cowards. You know, anyone who attacks a woman is a coward. And uh, when men are there, I think I could be wrong, but I think it just helps keep things a little bit calmer. And what 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 men tend to do is because because we don't speak at these events, um, we try and form a kind of human barrier between uh, ourselves and the women who are trying to speak along with, of course, the incredibly brave stewards at the Let Women Speak events. Uh, but running up to, uh, it wasn't just New Zealand media that was, uh, uh, did, uh, you know, portraying her as a Nazi and so on. Of course, Man uh, uh, Melbourne started that off when uh, some uh, Nazis appeared. I actually think that whole event stinks to high heaven. 
Uh, for one thing, why didn't Antifa uh, attack the Nazis? Why did they continue to attack the women? Uh, it was all very, very suspicious to me. And the way that the police um, led them to their place uh, where they did their Nazi salute, I don't know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it, it stunk to high heaven to me. So anyway, uh, that was happening. But also back in the UK, there are some people in the UK, uh, even on her own side, who uh, don't like Posey. Um, uh, and uh, they kind of added to this air or this kind of uh, toxic cloud around her uh, by, you know, basically what she does is she, she, she sets up a microphone, a few cameras, and local women come and say their piece. Um, and what would always happen time and time again is that those women's words would be ignored in favor of finding someone in the crowd who uh, had turned up and was, I don't know, part of a, some far right organization or something like that. So rather than tamping down this, uh, this view of her as a, as a Nazi, uh, a lot of people in the UK actually added to it. So of course, this, this is something that fills trans rights activists with joy because they were able to say, oh look, even those on our own side think she's this or that. But um, I've never heard any evidence of her being uh, uh, right wing, you know? I think she looks, she sounds to me like a fairly centrist person on most issues. Um, and we know that, that the, the, uh, what trans rights activists do is they try and cast uh, feminist opinions that are shared by the vast majority of decent people in, in, in both our countries uh, and uh, as, as um, uh, Nazi adjacent, you know? So uh, I saw it coming from a mile off and I was begging people to stop, to stop adding to it, you know? Um, you know, normally I try and stay out of uh, what you might call woman on woman um, uh, conflict uh, because I do think this is, this, uh, affects women more than anyone else and I, I think it's their fight and my only, um, uh, the only reason I'm in this fight is because I was cancelled and people call me a bigot and I don't like that so I was uh, fighting against that and I was fighting for my career. Um, but So I usually stay out of it but it got so bad that I started actually breaking my rule and saying stop, please stop saying this about Posey. You know, you're endangering her, you're endangering the women there. And sure enough, you know, it just built and built and built until the, the, the barrier came down and it just exploded, you know, and the woman was punched in the face repeatedly. Um, and Posey was trampled. I met another woman who was, uh, uh, who, 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 was uh, uh, who was on the ground and was uh, punched and kicked on the ground. Um, and I spoke to another woman on Sean Plunkett's show the other day who was a doctor who was also attacked and says she's still suffering from PTSD uh, because of it. But as, as with all these things, you know, part of Posey's uh, tactic, which, uh, which usually uh, uh, works without, without the kind of violence that we saw that day, is to let trans activists show what they really are, you know? That it's usually young men who are psychotically uh, misogynist, who um, are taking something out on their, I don't know, their mums or, or the girlfriends they didn't like, or whatever it happens to be. And uh, they, they always show themselves, they always reveal themselves. And Posey makes, Posey makes sure that those circumstances are possible because she, she, she does nothing except let women speak. And by, by, by simply doing that, and simply making that the, 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 the motto and the, and the principle uh, at stake, it just, it just reveals the other side perfectly, you know? I, I think you're correct. And, and that's what uh, some of the footage that I've shot over the, over the last uh, 12 months or so has, has also supported. Mm. Uh, your visit to our country is extremely important to, to many people. The, the various women's groups that I've spoken with were just absolutely overjoyed when it was announced that you would be, you would be coming here. But for broader New Zealand society, it's also important. It was an opportunity for us to achieve two things. And the first is um, to, to, to help 
um, rehabilitate our international reputation, mm -hmm. to demonstrate to, to our friends overseas that, that, uh, that foreign visitors can come to our country and they can speak and they can be safe doing so, which is right and proper. Yes. Um, what do you, uh, do you appreciate that, that that is the position and that uh, many people in this very small country are very happy to see you? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had no um, problems so far. Uh, it's all been very polite and people seem delighted when they find it. They, people are either delighted because of my stance on these issues or they're delighted because they're fans of Father Ted and the IT crowd. So I've not had any problems. In fact, we've been joking that when I go back to Posey, I'm going to say to her, uh, yeah, I don't know why you had such a hard time. It was actually kind of, it was fine. You know, what was the problem? Um, but the truth is that it was Posey's visit that made it safer for me to come. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I am pretty sure that New Zealanders never want to see something like what happened to her uh, happen again. And I also think that, you know, uh, violent as it was and, and horrible as it was for the people involved, um, it, it certainly seems to have had a pretty seismic effect on the debate over here. So, uh, yeah, I wish it had been the other way around. I wish I had been uh, attacked because I, I would love to get my hands on some of those guys. <laughs> um, and they had been safer. But what actually happened was Posey came over and made it safer for people who subsequently came over, uh, you know. And and I mean, I mean, even if I had come first, I may not have received the violent uh, response because they don't tend to attack men. As I say, uh, their their rage is 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 aimed at women mainly, and men don't seem. I think men are. It's like it's. I'll get, it's like the way turf. The word turf. That really only refers to women. You know, trans -exclu exclusionary radical feminists, that's aimed at women, you know? It's not, it's not aimed at men. So, uh, yeah, the movement as a whole is incredibly misogynist. And when someone like me comes over, especially because I have the extra element of, uh, you know, my sitcom writing and so on, I just get a much easier time, you know? But uh, I'm really, ho I, I haven't, like when I was, met, when I arrived at the, um, at the airport, I was met by two New Zealand policemen at, and they escorted me through customs. Uh, they were incredibly friendly, incre incredibly pleasant. And I kind of almost immediately realized, oh, this is because of Posey, this is what happened. You know, they don't want anything like that to happen again. So I just think that it might be, I hope that sometime she comes over again um, and she, uh, Again, you know, just they let her speak this time. And uh, Sean Plunkett was the only person who interviewed her. Um, but she deserves to be heard by far more people. Uh, we differ on certain aspects of the fight. Uh, you know, she's very hardline on certain things that I'm not as hardline on. But in the end, I feel like my job is to try and help make it safer for the conversation to happen. Because in the end, whether you disagree with someone or not, or whether you have uh, specific uh, points on which you differ, the important thing is to have the conversation, you know? And I think New Zealand, after what happened, is perfectly able to have a grown-up conversation about these issues, especially with the change in government. I think, you're, I think you're exactly right, and that's extremely insightful, and I concur very much with your points. Uh, it is certainly the case that Mrs. King Mitchell's visit uh, really did pique a lot of people into things like um, the tactics that were being employed by the radical left uh, via the vehicle of trans rights, uh, corruption in the media and so on and so forth. And I also thoroughly concur that, that welcoming her back to our country uh, would, be just a, would just be a magnificent result. Yes. But, um, it, it, it's, it's an opportunity, it would be an opportunity for us to, to demonstrate that, that free speech is uh, something that, that we do care about. Um, I see that you've brought with you uh, a, a large copy of the WPATH files. Yeah. Am I pronouncing that right? Is, is WPATH yep. how it is, is w, said? I think so. I think so. WPATH, I don't think, I think it'd be a bit clumsy to call it WPATH files, but that's the, it's 242 pages long, I think. Uh, the main body of it is, um, is the uh, whistleblower documents that were sent to Michael Schellenberger. 
um, and they are kind of explained in the first part of it, which basically goes through what they reveal about the organisation. Um, and the title, you can't really say, you can't really uh, explain it better than the title, which is Pseudoscientific Surgical and Hormonal Experiments on Children, Adolescents and Vulnerable Adults. So it's a, it's a dynamite piece of research. Um, uh, it is, it's revealed a few things we didn't know. It's revealed uh, the absolute uh, ideological fervor of these people, uh, whereby I think there was one doctor who said something like, she only turned down one person who came looking for hormones. And she said the only reason she, and she uses the word regrettably, the only, she says, I, the only reason I regrettably had to turn them down was because they were having hallucinations during the assessment process. So that is how eager they are to give these drugs uh, to people who are vulnerable for all sorts of reasons, whether it's their mental state or their age. Uh, these doctors just want to give the drugs and see what happens. Uh, and it's, it's it, yeah, they, I, but what's interesting is it's a live experiment, but they don't seem to be interested in the results because there's no follow-up studies. The follow-up study, there, there do exist a few, but they are discontinued after a very short time. So no one is tracking these, these kids and finding out how they're doing, you know? And, uh, you know, we've, we've had years now of people who are trying to research these issues, who are trying to talk about them being canceled uh, driven from their jobs, dragged in front of tribunals, and um, the WPATH files, it just puts everything in one place so that the next time someone says, well, this isn't happening to children, or well, this isn't happening to autistic people, or well, this isn't happening to gay kids, uh, there's probably a page in the WPATH files that, said, that shows you that, yes, actually it is, you know. So it's going to be, I think, an immensely useful document. I would, I would suggest that everybody does what, what we've done and get it printed out because you will want to go over it with a highlight pen uh, and uh, everyone is going to find something new uh, to uh, get out of it in terms of fighting this, uh, you know, evil experiment on, on um, vulnerable people. I, I think it's, it's very significant for the New Zealand context. Uh, for two reasons. New Zealand, New Zealand is, is two almost diametrically opposed things at once, and that is that we're, um, we're quite a backwater at the end of the world on these issues. But also, like Canada, we're also very much in the vanguard of um, a lot of the, the, the uh, gender issues. For example, uh, gender self-ID went through New the New Zealand uh, political system and with, with uh, support from all of the parties in Parliament. Mm. New Zealand uh, prescribes puberty, blocker, puberty blockers to children at 10 times the rate of the United Kingdom. Mm. Uh, now with the release of the WPATH files, with the NHS uh, banning the prescription of, of uh, puberty blockers to children, it feels like we are about to be hit by a tidal wave by this stuff, and it is it is pretty much uh, receiving very little coverage in our media and very very little comment uh, from our political class. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know that's that that um, dynamic uh, plays out in every country. Ireland was exactly the same. Ireland passed self ID without anything like the kind of uh, scrutiny or conversation that such a massive change. Uh, should have, uh, uh, you know, prompted. Uh, and as a result, we've had women being placed with psychotic men in Limerick prison. Um, and recently they tried to remove the word mother from the Irish constitution because they've been convinced by lunatics that words like mother are somehow uh, not inclusive. So, uh, you see it everywhere, you know, to a lesser or greater extent. Luckily, what seems to have happened in the UK is because it, it didn't, because we, we saw it happening in other countries. I, was, I live in the UK now. Uh, and and fem, we, by we, I mean feminists and my, you know, people like myself who were, who were observing the um, uh, issue from the outside, as it were, 
Uh, we just saw it coming. We knew what self-ID meant. We could see it playing out, even in countries that didn't have self-ID, because a lot of countries have self-ID, uh, you know, in, in all but name, in the sense that, uh, I don't know if you know about this, but in Portland, Oregon recently, a woman got a two-year suspended sentence for challenging a man in the women's toilets, which is the most shocking thing I've ever heard. And I'm not sure whether self-ID, I don't you know, it's not, it's certainly not the law of the land in the US, but it, I don't know what happens from state to state that allowed that woman to be uh, uh, harassed in that way. So, um, uh, so yeah, so it's not actually, I wouldn't feel embarrassed that New Zealand has fallen to this stuff because everyone did, you know? And I think in, in many ways, there's a kind of melancholy aspect to it because am I right in thinking that, that uh, homosexuality was, was, was only legalized relatively recently in New Zealand. That's like, correct. Yes, in the 80s, was it? Uh, th yes, I think it was mid-80s from memory. Yes, so I think in countries where that type of thing happens, and Ireland is exactly the same because of the influence of the Catholic Church, uh, there's an overcorrection that, that, that happens. And you go from, uh, you know, a very, very dangerous place for gay people to be to be to to almost <laughs> almost just as dangerous, uh, except with people thinking they're doing the right thing because they think that they've corrected the very specific form of prejudice that used to exist. So you've gone from the homophobia of telling of arresting gay people to the homophobia of telling gay people that they're actually women or 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 men or sorry telling gay people that they're actually the opposite sex. So it's 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 kind of a variation of horseshoe theory, which says that the left and the right will eventually meet each other. Uh, you know, basically, gender ideology is the most homophobic uh, um, uh, set of beliefs that have, that have existed since, uh, you know, evangel evan American evangelism or, or uh, you know, Irish Catholicism at its very worst, you know. And uh, it's, it only, it, it's only taken the form it, it has taken because people are so frightened of making the same mistakes. And they think that trans is the new civil rights frontier, when in fact, it, it's nothing of the sort. It's uh, it, the, the only people who benefit from the trans movement are usually straight white men, you know? Straight white men who suddenly get, uh, get to put the world on easy mode because they can enter into women's spaces and win, win women's medals and achievements, uh, get onto women-only shortlists. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a boom time for mediocre uh, men with no shame, you know? Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, we've just swapped one form of misogyny and prejudice for another, and it's a mirror of the original form because, you know, in the old days in Ireland, I'll give you an example, like, like one of the things that happened in Ireland was that gay, the gay member of a family would be often the one who was sentenced to the priesthood. Because what else do you do with him? He's not getting married, so shove him off to the priesthood. Hopefully he'll forget all about it and he won't be doing it because he's a priest, so he'll be, he'll be, uh, uh, he'll, he'll be moral and all that sort of thing. It was a way of shoving the problems under the rug, you know? Uh, and uh, this is a similar story, you know, you, we, we've got so many stories of young gender non-conforming gay kids whose parents, and, and one of the most famous examples of this is Susie Green in, in the UK, who was the head of Mermaids, who basically did a TED talk where she admitted that her husband was, and her, her husband had, was, was very uncomfortable, that they had a gender non-conforming uh, boy, and he could, he could, from what she says, he couldn't seem to deal with it at all. So they were hiding the kid's toys. They were uh, not letting the kid express himself. And uh, as a result, I think, I think what happened was she went online, became radicalized by what she was reading about uh, the trans issue uh, on websites like, you know, Tumblr and, and uh, Reddit. And I think she basically did what a lot of people do, which was, uh, she tried to solve a, a different problem by uh, by kind of adopting the magic words, my child is trans, you know? 
And uh, yeah, I don't think this poor kid had a chance. He was, he was a, he, could, he would probably would have grown up to be a perfectly happy gay boy. But because he had homophobic parents, because he had parents who'd been radicalized, uh, he's now, uh, he doesn't have uh, genitals. Uh, he, he has a, uh, uh, he ha he's, he's had a vaginoplasty. Uh, that they weren't even able to do a proper one because he had been put on hormones since he was a little boy. And as a result, his penis wasn't big enough to form the cavity that uh, uh, is required in these operations. I think sometimes they, they use fish skin to, to, and I think with him, they actually used a part of his colon to form this, to form this uh, uh, what, you, what you might call, cavity might be the wrong word, but um, to form this uh, uh, faux vagina. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, it's a horror story, uh, just like the Magdalene laundries, just like uh, horror stories in Ireland in the past, um, but it's just got a slightly more um, futuristic element with these, uh, with the with the introduction of plastic surgery, surgery which uh, has just gone out of control uh, around this um, around this practice of transitioning children, and uh, in America there's a you know there's we we know Dr. Shiv Gallagher who's who's another Irish Irish person who boasts on Twitter about, or on TikTok, about cutting the breasts off healthy young girls. So it's a, a nightmarish, homophobic, misogynistic movement uh, that for s somehow the left adopted with, with, you know, the left just, just fell over themselves uh, 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 pushing this stuff. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't feel embarrassed that New Zealand has its problems and that the media is ignoring it and all this sort of thing because it's it's the same thing playing out everywhere. The media is mostly made up of very privileged uh, middle class people, and this is a this is a a, a movement that's uh, born of privilege. You know, all these all these kids who had nothing else to worry about, and they they looked inside and they're terrified by what they see on the internet. They're terrified by the nihilism of, of, uh, of um, current uh, thinking on uh, the climate and so on. And they escape into this world where at least they feel they have a little bit of control. But unfortunately, it's, a, it's an illusion because once the operations start, uh, you know, you're a, you're a, you're a, me you're a medical, you're a, med you're a patient for life, you know? And uh, these kids don't know it. They don't know what uh, testosterone is doing to them. They don't know what it will do to them. The information is almost deliberately being will withheld from them because you cannot study this issue. There's a famous story of Michael Bailey who wrote a book about transsexualism. And, uh, you know, they, they, they ended up, you know, attacking his children, posting, I think they posted posters of his children around town. I think they accused him of abusing his children. Uh, they made his life hell. Uh, and uh, so that's what happens when you try and find out the truth behind this, uh, this movement. And I, I don't even think they do it deliberately. I think they just know that if the facts come in, it's all over, you know? So I think that the, the, the taboo around talking about the issue, uh, researching the issue, uh, debating the issue is is simply because they already know the answer. These 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 uh, these procedures are um, experimental. Uh, they fail ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Um, there's a famous uh, incidence of Jazz Jennings, who's uh, who had the same situation as Susie Green's child in that his his penis was not big enough to form the cavity, the orifice. Uh, and uh, they had the operation, and it exploded. You know, the whole, the whole, uh, that whole section exploded a few days later, and he was in intense and terrible pain. And now he's grotesquely obese, uh, obviously unhappy, um, has to dilate this 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 uh, uh, this neo vagina uh, regularly, or it will seal up, I believe. Um, and uh, no one told him. Everyone just kind of launched into it with, uh, without doing anything like the kind of research that 
any normal parent would have would have insisted on before they 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 went down this road you know there's a famous thing that actually Lansick who's this uh, video maker uh, who who covers this stuff she's particularly interested in jazz Jennings and she pointed out that when Marcy Bowers and another doctor were operating on jazz Jennings they were arguing it's actually in the show that these two doctors are arguing during the surgery. And she said, do you know why they're arguing? Because they don't know what they're doing. This is totally experimental. This is a, a, a punt by these doctors. And uh, uh, yeah, you know, how can you, I don't know how the people who are pushing this can live with themselves quite honestly. You know, it is, um, it's a live, as it says in the W Path files, it is a live experiment on children. Mr. Linehan, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me today. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, you have very many supporters who are very, very pleased that you are here uh, amongst the women's groups, amongst broad in New Zealand society. Before we finish, is there anything that you would like to, to say to those people? <laughs> yeah, uh, it would really be helpful if you bought my book. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise it's not as depressing as the last few minutes have been. Um, you know, my book is mainly about comedy writing. Uh, it's just that we haven't figured out a way to market it that kind of draws out that aspect. And also, people only seem to want to talk to me about this issue. So, uh, yeah, have a read of the book. It's um, a lot lighter than this conversation. And, um, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's one of those things where, as with all books written about this subject, uh, Activists within bookshops are hiding it, uh, putting it in the stock room, putting it, never putting it in the new releases section, all that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, please buy my book uh, because uh, it's 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 one of the few forms of income that I have, you know, and uh, I want to keep fighting this and I want to keep talking about it. And we want that too, and it certainly is a sensational read. Uh, best wishes for the rest of your Australasian tour, and thank you once again for taking the time. Thank you.